All right, so a lot of you already know this story, which stinks because I would have picked something where I couldn't just make crap up, but that's okay, we'll go through this. No, I'm kidding. Um, I actually really like this story. I think it's an interesting one. And I've talked to several local people from the area, a few former staff members and looked through some articles and did some digging on this. So you probably know that we have nuclear origins to our refuge, but you probably don't know the whole story. So hopefully this will give you a little more detail about it. So we begin in present day Walnut Creek. And lovely picture by Joan. Uh, you've probably driven over the creek when you've come to the refuge. You might have stopped and looked in it. Um, it's a pretty small creek. There's not a whole lot going on, but it is the refuge's original namesake. So we were originally called Walnut Creek National Wildlife Refuge and only changed the name in, I believe it was 98, in honor of Congressman Neil Smith. Um, but the creek is also the primary water source for the refuge and usually refuges are named after geological natural features. So that's how we got that. So it is important to the refuge and it was originally intended for something very, very different. And that was to be cooling water for a nuclear power plant. Now to go from a wildlife refuge to a nuclear power plant, that's a big jump. So probably wondering how do we get this far? And in order to think about that, we have to go back in time a little bit. And to be specific, we have to go back to the 1960s downtown Des Moines. And I'm just curious, who here actually remembers 1960s Des Moines? I have yet to crack my third decade, so this is all completely foreign to me. Um, Cars look awesome. My dad swears that baby blue Thunderbirds were all their age. They were awesome. I don't really get the fins. That's me personally. But if anyone has a cool experience from 1960s Des Moines, feel free to put it in the chat. I'd love to hear it. But Des Moines is roaring in the 60s. Uh, you got the Yonkers building. You got lots of people in the downtown center. There's actually more than 200,000 people living in Des Moines at this time, which is a massive number. And if you're a city planner, you are projecting that out and saying, we're going to have huge population growth over the next two decades. And we don't have a reliable power source to be able to grid all of these new people in. So they wanted to look for a power source that could keep pace with the growth of the city. And so Iowa Power and Light, the utility company at the time, decided to start looking at some options. And back in the 60s, nuclear was considered an efficient economical way for lots of people to get energy. So they were considering doing a nuclear power plant somewhere in the area. So they decided they were going to look for some places that they could put this. And one thing about nuclear power stations is you need lots of land for them. You need water as a cooling source for the reactors. And you want it to be close to the population so it's efficient to transport the energy, but not so close that you're posing health risks. And they found a promising area in Prairie City and Vandalia, so the two towns that the refuge is now long. And what was nice about this is you had Walnut Creek and the river not that far away. And most of the area was undeveloped farmland. So it was sparsely populated. So they thought, wow, this is a really good place. We think this could be a site for a nuclear power station. Let's see if we can get some people to sell their land to us. And so in 1975 and 1976, they started purchasing up land. They did this under a shell company called Redlands Incorporated so they could keep the plan on the down low until they were ready to make it public. And they managed to purchase about 3,200 acres plus. So quite a few landowners were willing to sell. And one of the reasons was that they were sometimes paying double what regular market value for the land would be. So they got enough land they felt confident they could make this project happen. So they commissioned the building of a 1300 megawatt station 
that was going to be called the Vandalia unit after the town. But some of the landowners started to get suspicious. Why was this Nebraska-based company buying all this land at such high costs? So they started doing some digging. And when it came to light that this was actually Iowa Power buying land so they could build a nuclear station, residents weren't happy. Uh, there was a lot of anti-nuclear sentiment and some of the residents actually joined together for the Iowa Energy Foundation to protest building this nuclear area. They did not want anything to do with this. So that was kind of a negative for Iowa Power. They had this pushback, but then 1977 comes and even more harsh realities start to fall. And the biggest one is that the cost was projected to be way higher than they initially thought. So it wasn't gonna be nearly as economical. And then that massive population boom that was supposed to happen in Des Moines, that actually didn't happen. The population was actually declining compared to what it had been in the past. So between those two and the strong nuclear backlash, Iowa Power said, okay, we're gonna put the pause button on this. We're gonna revisit it in a few years. Maybe this will become more economically feasible. Maybe Des Moines will start to have a population boom again. We're just gonna wait and see if this works out. But then two years later, their fate was sealed by an event that happened in the US. And I'm wondering if anyone can guess what that event was. Feel free to chime in. Three Mile Island. Nailed it. It was indeed Three Mile Island. On March 28, 1979, we have the Three Mile Island disaster. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Three Mile Island was a nuclear station in the Pennsylvania area whose reactor leaked coolant in what at the time was the most catastrophic failure in nuclear. This was 2.4 billion dollars in damages estimated that's in 2006 dollars which is substantial this was health impacts this was environmental impacts this was facilities impacts this was a really bad nuclear disaster so it pretty much cemented anti-nuclear sentiment that if people were wary of nuclear before this they were pretty much adamantly against it afterwards so the 1980s come uh, Iowa Power just doesn't think they can make this work. So in 82, they officially cancel the Vandalia unit, citing the economic downturn and the anti-nuclear sentiment as their reasons. But they're still having all of this land. They still have more than 3,000 acres that they don't know what to do with. So for the remainder of the 80s, they're actually leasing it out to farmers, having them farm it. And they're really hoping that they can find a developer that they could just sell this to in one go because it was expensive land. They just want to be done with it. Which luckily, a late 80s Congressman Neil Smith was looking for land. He had been trying to find a large tract of land to work on a special project. And his project was to try to create some kind of public park. The reason being that Iowa had really limited public land available and he wanted to do something that would demonstrate the state's historical landscape, which would be focusing on tall grass prairie. And uh, Redlands Incorporated found out he was interested in this and said, would the government be interested in purchasing this land for your park? And Congressman Neil Smith said, I'm going to see if we can make that happen. So in 1990, he proposed a bill to Congress to purchase the land and have it created as a wildlife refuge. And it passed. I'm happy to say that Walnut Creek National Wildlife Refuge was established. And that's what brings us to here today, that we were able to get all this started. And as I mentioned, it was renamed in 98 in honor of Congressman Smith. And the rest, as you know, is history. So just a little tidbit, and hopefully you'll look at the creek a little bit differently now. It is much more than just a few feet of water. It is 
a legacy. It is something that could have been completely different, but now is a major water source for a wildlife refuge, which I think is pretty cool.